Hello, my friends. Welcome back to another video. So today I am going to try a new product. Now, the number one question I get asked is, can you use primary elements in resin? So normally I tell you no, right? Well, I'm being told that if you pre-dissolve your primary elements with this Vivid Art Fluid, also sold by Color Art, that you can use them in your resin. So what I'm going to do today is test that out to see if, in fact, they mix in well and whether or not this solution messes with the structure of your resin as far as working time. I know that the piece will cure, but does it cut your working time down? That's what I want to know. My KS resin is a 45 minute and up working resin, meaning I have at least 45 minutes. Usually I get an hour, hour and 15 minutes. So I have some mixed up. We're going to see if the two colors that I mixed with this solution, if they they get thicker, quick, quicker than the rest of the colors. So what I'm being told you have to do is you put some of your colorant, your primary elements into a cup and you put a few drops of this in just until it's dissolved. You don't want it, you know, a big cup full of it. You just want to dissolve it and make sure that, and I'm going to turn on the flash so you can see this pretty playful peony color. Make sure that um, it's just dissolved, okay? So I put maybe a quarter teaspoon of powder and a couple of drops of the fluid in and mixed until it was like this. Okay, so that was one color I did, and the other color I'm trying out is cranberry. Now, I am going to have a full-blown product video for color art very soon, and I am going to go through the A's and Z's of how you can use the products, what you can do besides pouring with them, why Resin art is normally used for resin and primary elements are usually used for acrylic pouring because in reality, the thing that confuses people is they look a lot alike. And I'm going to show you that really quick here just to explain. So you may not know this. Resin is an alcohol-based product, okay? And when we do acrylic pouring, that is considered a water-based product because the paint with water, that's water-based. So primary elements are designed to dissolve with water. Resin art colors are designed to dissolve with alcohol. I don't know why that is. The, my camera hates black. So normally... If you try to put this in resin, because there's no water in resin, it's not going to dissolve fully. It will look a little bit like it does, but if you look closely, it's clumping in the bottom. There's specks all through your artwork. It's not dissolving correctly, and vice versa. If you try to take the resin art colors and put them in water, they're just going to float on top. In this video I have coming out this week, it's going to teach you a lot. I'm going to show you something called the shotgun shotgun shot glass test where I put these products in solutions that they shouldn't be in to just show you why it's important to use them with the right product so this art fluid supposedly allows you to use this in resin we're going to test that right now I'm going to I have my colors in the cup already I have my KS resin mixed up. I do have a code for this. It is all caps TAM 2019. That's for KS resin. And then for the color art, it's Tammy Anderson 120. I'm sorry, Tammy Anderson art 120 for color art products. And that's all in the description. So I'm just using a little tiny bit of resin for each color because I don't need much of it. This is an uh, older painting that I always wanted to do a second layer on. It was a resin swipe that I did. And I just want to do another layer over it to give it a little more depth. 
So I don't need much of each color because you can see there's negative space. So I have a little bit of gold over here to the side and I will show you all these pretty colors in a second. Okay, so these colors mixed in quite nicely, the uh, two primary elements into the resin. That is the cr color cranberry. And this one here is the playful peony. Okay, and then this right here is an actual resin art color from color art. See, I now I can tell you 100% without a doubt, you cannot use their resin colors in acrylic pouring. Now, whether or not this works out great for us, then we'll know we can use primary elements in both. And people want to know this because they want to buy, you know, the, the one product and try to use it for both to save some money. Now, the colors are totally different for resin art than they are for primary elements, but I can understand wanting to save some money. So this one here, for example, we would never find this color in primary elements, maybe something a little close, but this is called Fantasy Fuchsia, and it is absolutely amazing. All right, so that's one of the resin art colors. Then the rest that I have, now this is just some gold spray paint that I use for my gold. I That's just my favorite gold. It's what I like. This here is my white. That is Lorez white. And then this here is a just resin, resin pigment, and it's hot pink. And what I did was I put a little drip of it, the colorant in here with more clear just to um, get that lighter shade of pink. Now, when I get into my product video for color art, they do sell resin tints that I'm going to show you that are all transparent and look just like this. They have one called Hot Lips that looks exactly like this, but because I had that one out and I could just put a drop into some clear resin, I didn't use it today, I'm gonna save that for the product video. So anyway, please, please, please make sure you're subscribed and click the bell on the word all make sure it's on the word all because you're not going to want to miss that video it's going to be an a to z kind of thing and you're going to learn a lot okay so here's my painting from a little while ago um i just it was a pretty resin swipe but it needs something else for me so i am going to put down a bunch of clear over the entire surface Okay, and then with my gloved hand, you have to wear gloves. I'm going to spread it out. When it comes to resin work, you, there's, you know, if you're sensitive to smells, you really should be wearing a mask, whether it be something like KS or art resin that is uh, no VOCs, you know, all the stuff they want you to hear. When you heat this resin, it does emit, is that right? Emit, omit, <laughs> fumes. You know, they're not strong to me. The, the better brands are not strong, but still. The proper way to do resin is to wear gloves and to wear a mask. I do not wear a mask because I'm talking, you won't will not hear me at all. And um, I would not wear one anyway. I just... It's my personal preference. I have good ventilation where I am here and I want to be happy when I'm doing my art. So please, no lectures, I know. <laughs> okay, so I have my clear coat down. Another thing too, don't wipe your gloves down at, with alcohol at this point and then go use a torch because that can cause a fire. So change your gloves or just wipe them with a paper towel, not soaked in alcohol. I saw a post not too long ago where a woman almost set herself on fire. So 
alcohol and flames, you know, they don't mix. I know that, you know that, but it's something that you can easily do without thinking, you know, you're trying to, to be in the zone. And it's very easy to have a doo-doo-doo -do -do moment. <laughs> I have them all the time. So now I'm gonna just torch my bubbles. Just like with acrylic pouring, same. This is the same almost as acrylic pouring. I mean, you're putting down your base coat, which this for me is clear because I'm doing a second layer. And you're pouring your colors and trying to design them. I mean, a lot of the techniques that we use in acrylic pouring is the same, done the same way in resin. Like this swipe, I put down some colors and swiped it with paper. It's just, I think resin gets a bad rap, first of all. And uh, second of all, it's a more expensive product to play around with. But I will say, with my coupon code and the free shipping that KS offers, it helps a lot. Okay, so... Now I'm going to, what do I want to do? I'm going to start putting down some of these colors down in the center. And I'm going to just feel the cup. It's not getting warm yet, so that's a good thing. Right down the center. And believe it or not, when you go and put clear down first and then add your colors, it does a lot of cool things. It creates depth. And it also helps promote cell action in your piece. So you can see I'm just kind of stringing it back and forth. So we're going to swipe again and see what we can get. I'm going to put this cup to the side. So that was the color cranberry. Then I'm going to put down some of that playful peony. And then I'm going to put down the Fantasy Fuchsia. I forgot the flash is on in my camera. I wanted to put the bright light on, but I can't because of this black background. All you're going to see is the ring light. It's very hard to film, believe it or not. It's not as easy as just turn on the camera. Okay, so next, I'm going to take the hot pink. Just like so. And then the second hot pink that I made, that's more transparent. Okay, I'm going to save the gold for last. And then here is my white. I'm going to put it right down the center. Actually, let me just pour that. Just like so. I'm going to torch again. Out of gas. Grab the next one. It's also very important when you're done working on your piece that for the first half hour you keep coming back and popping air bubbles. Okay, because they will keep rising. It's not a one torch kind of deal. And you always, always, always want to cover your piece when you're done to keep hair and dust out. All right, so now we're going to swipe. So I have a piece of plastic here. You can use packaging, whatever you want. 
and I'm going to hopefully put it in the resin. And pull down and lift up just like so wish I had a little better connection on that one let's go right here I'm going to take a smaller piece and I'm just going to keep pulling it down. You're going to see the cells developing over time. Uh, let's see here. Let's move that. Okay, and then we're going to turn it around. Just like that. And do the same exact thing on this side. Almost done. Okay. Oh, I forgot a spot over here. What am I doing? All right. Now I'm going to torch it. And you can see that the cells develop a lot slower in resin than they do in acrylic pouring. But they do develop. All right. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my gold to kind of... Uh, I'm going to try to vein it through the piece. So here's my gold here, and I'm going to check on those colors in a minute too to see how they're doing.
Okay. And I'm going to go back through with my stick. Kind of breaking that up a little bit. And just kind of weaving it through the colors. Another good thing about resin is it's very hard to muddy it up, if you know what I mean. It's very hard to make mud with resin. The colors tend to stay by themselves. They don't blend as much. Yes, you can get them to blend, but... Okay. So almost done here. I'll pull this one back here. Just adds a little something different, you know? I don't know about you, but... Doing the same thing over and over again is just, ugh, I need a break. <laughs> and no offense to anybody that does the same thing over and over again, but not me, my friends, not me. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to torch and give you a close-up. This gold... Also, spray paint or gold leaf, if you get the torch and kind of like go over it a couple times, it'll do some really cool effects. I'll show you those in a second. Alrighty. See that cool texture you get in the gold from the flame? So anyway, that was just a quick piece to demonstrate this new product. I am going to check that in a second. That sparkle that you see down there, that maroon sparkle, that's the Fantasy Fuchsia. Got a lot of lacing. The gold is really a, a pretty touch, if you ask me. Well, let's check on these colors now. So, it was this one here. Just feeling the cup with my hand. Checking out the texture. The thickness of it. Let me compare it to a resin art color. And let's compare it to a paste. So it seems like it's a tad bit thicker 
than the other colors, but not enough to where you couldn't use it still. I mean, it's still flowing, okay? So you see that? And then here's a resin art color. So they're both still flowing. That one's just flowing a little bit slower. So I would say it works, guys. Vivid Art Fluid. It's on the Color Art website. If you order just this, you can still use my coupon code, Tammy Anderson Art 120. It's in the description. If you own primary elements and you want to use them in resin, this is the product you need. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Again, don't forget, we are going to have that big video coming out very soon if anybody's interested in this piece of art it is for sale contact me art by tammy at yahoo.com don't forget to subscribe don't forget to check out the links in the description my amazon links the chaos resin links if you use the amazon shop link i get credit for that for my channel which helps tremendously even if you don't buy art supplies and last but not least our Facebook group, United We Pour with Tammy and Lisa. Head over there, subscribe. It's in the description. I would love to see your art. I love you all and happy pouring.